Hello, I'm John with Roadkill Incorporated, and welcome to my new series, Retro Resale. This week I'm showing you how I bought and sold an Amiga 500 system and literally quadrupled my money. But before we get to all of that, what is this new series about? So, I have to be honest, the reason I'm doing this series is I have a big problem. I have an addiction to buying retro computers on eBay and Craigslist, and mostly from recyclers, and besides that, I get a lot of donations, and it's really just out of control. I, I needed to find a way to justify all the madness, so I came up with the idea of retro resale. In this series, I'll make you an accomplice to my addiction. I'll take you on the entire journey from sourcing, buying, unboxing, testing, selling, and evaluating whether or not it was a good deal. At the end of each video, I'll do a breakdown right on the screen, kind of like they do on American Pickers, and we'll see whether it was worth what I paid and how much profit I made. And the best thing is, as long as I sell it and make money, it will justify my retro addiction because I need to buy for the series, right? Probably flawed logic there, but hey, I'm going to go with it. So this is about the business end of retro. I'm a refurbisher. I buy thousands of computers a year, mostly from recyclers. So if you like buying and selling and business, this is for you. If you want restorations and retro brighting, there are plenty of other guys out there to watch. Now I know I'll get a lot of crap for this because so many retro people think retro should be basically free, but the fact is, in a capitalist society, and we do live in a capitalist society, it's financial value that keeps the product alive. The fact that I can tell recyclers I'll pay $50 for every Commodore 64 that comes down the line, that saves the Commodore 64. If I could only justify $10, they wouldn't bother bending over to pick it up, and it would get destroyed for the scrap value. Even though retro has tripled in recent years, recyclers still destroy millions of retro items a year. That's right, all your favorite retro machines are destroyed every day at recyclers. It's only the rising value that keeps it from happening, and it's the denial of this reality that causes the stuff to be scrapped. At the end of the day, taking a retro item out of the scrap heap, away from someone who thinks it's trash, cleaning it up and putting it into the hands of a person who treats it like a museum piece, that's nothing but a positive, and there's nothing wrong with making money doing that. If we had a thousand more small businesses salvaging and selling retro, then a ton more retro and a ton more electronics in general could be saved and reused. Anyway, enough lecturing, so let's buy and sell retro. So I do a million searches a day on eBay, and it's safe to say the good deals go to those who are very persistent. Uh, the good deals are sniped before anyone else sees them. That, that's the real secret. So I search for Amigas um, because they're one of the most popular computers with the most profit margin, and then I sort recent first to find the newest stuff listed. Uh, Amiga 500s were very popular, the most common Amiga produced. When I buy them now, I buy in the 100 to 150 range generally, with mouse and power adapter, maybe 200 max. Uh, the computer can go for 350 if presented correctly, and systems can go for infinitely more. So out of the blue, I find this system, and at the 375 shipped price for a computer, hard drive, monitor, and tons of other items, I'm immediately drawn to it, and I buy it instantly. Look at this, Amiga 500 in working condition with good monitor. I can't stress how important that is. Not only the price is amazing, but the seller is putting themselves on the line, stating it's working. So if it's not, you can get a partial or whole refund through eBay. The way to price a lot is to identify the core items that absolutely get you your money back plus double your money. And then from that point on, you don't even have to worry about the rest because it's just the cherry on top. I know I can get five to 600 for the computer and monitor, so right there it's a done deal. But look how much extra you get. Printer, discs, joystick, hard drive, speakers, floppy drive, Xbox 3D glasses. The hard drive is an original Commodore A590. Those were worth a ton back in the day and sell for a few hundred at least now. The Xpex glasses are rare 3D glasses, and I'd guess those probably sell for two to 300 too. So this was a no-brainer. If I instinctively know I can double my money, I just buy it. In a case like this, time is of the essence though. If you make a low offer or send a question or just waste your time one way or another, you're allowing the possibility that someone else will come in and take it before you. Remember what I said, the best deals are sniped within minutes of listing. So yeah, great purchase. Really can't wait to see what this looks like. Okay, so it arrived in three boxes, and already I'm impressed with the packing job. They used double wall boxes. Uh, I'll definitely be able to use these boxes again. 
So not quite as good on the inside. Things are sort of loose like this. You really shouldn't have things moving around. Box number two, the monitor plus stuff. I don't like to see stuff piled on top of a monitor, adding that additional weight that could cause problems if it bounces around. But, but again, better than most packing jobs. Okay, so box one unpacked. We have a lot of good stuff here. Uh, this is actually my first Amiga modem, the Supra 2400. So, blast of nostalgia there. Here are the power supplies for the computer and the hard drive. The hard drive has its own power supply. Uh, I think it's this one, because I've never seen that label, and it seems extra heavy. This one's a little bit crunched, but whatever. Hopefully it still works. Uh, these guys are crazy. They're, they're One's a little bigger than the other. I don't know if they're homemade or what, but they're just really amazing quality old school floppy disk holders. Uh, it's like they're so dated and so cheesy that they're almost interesting again. So I don't know, I might have to keep those. Uh, speakers, look at these. These are way above and beyond the typical cheap uh, computer speakers from back in the day. So I can definitely do something with those. Wonder what they're worth, probably not a ton, but they're still cool. And then here is the 500. Um, I was happy to notice if you take this off, there's really not a lot of yellowing going on. I got the impression from the pictures there's probably some yellowing, but it's really not bad. Just have to kind of get this gunk off of there. So um, hmm, I have to test the floppy. And then I don't know what this flap is. That's kind of odd. I've never seen that. I uh, took the 501 out of here, the 512K plus clock. There's probably a battery in here that needs to be removed. They tend to leak and destroy this thing, and they can get on the pins too, but I don't see any corrosion on the pins. Okay, box two looking uh, equally interesting. So we have a TAC5 joystick. The button looks like it's sticking a little bit, but that's probably easy, easily fixed. We have the Xbox 3D glasses. Look at those. They're, they're just nice and shiny and this looks brand new. Uh, and guess what? They came wrapped in a shirt. The best thing. I wonder if this is a 80s shirt. I, I guess it is by the look of it. Um, anyway, so we also have these horrible, this horrible printer stand thing that we all had back in the day, as well as the cardboard filing thing that we all had back in the day. This is a perfect sound. Uh, it took me a second to remember this, but this is an audio digitizer, left and right, um, and then headphone jack, I think. Um, yeah, the Amiga's audio out left and right does not accept input, so you had to buy one of these guys and use some software. I had something similar. I had one that was more oriented to music. You could, like, whistle into it, and it would show you the notes. Uh, but yeah, this is probably worth 60, 80 bucks. Um, then we have the mouse, which is a very curious one. At first I thought it was damaged, but I look, looking at it, it's obviously some kind of a mod. A uh, different cable there. I don't know, maybe it's like a rapid fire button or something. I'll have to ask the previous owner what he remembers about that. Uh, since it does seem to be his actual computer. Um, yeah, there is a bunch of gunk on the rollers, but that's fine. That comes off easily. What you don't want is rust. I'll have to see if this is usable to the extent that I could sell it with a computer. I don't want to detract from the value of a system, but these mice are rare enough and, and valuable enough that you really want to use it if you can. Then we have the predictable wad of cabling that we need. Glad that it's included. And then we have the monitor itself, which will require some sticker removal, but beyond that, it looks to be in good shape. And the door works. Feels a little sticky, but hey, I'll take it if it has a door at all. A lot of these monitors have a missing door. All right, and box three also does not disappoint. This is a really, really great lot. Uh, first of all, we gotta start with this printer. This thing is crazy. It's a wide format printer and it is a inkjet. I, I would have thought maybe because it's kind of weird, maybe it's thermal or something, but it's an inkjet. I assume just black and white. So anyway, next we have OS 2.0 system software and this, this insane binder with all the information. And then you also have the disks 
associated with it. I think this all came as a package. It also included the chip, the 2.0 chip. So if you had an older 500 with 1.3, you pulled the chip, put in the 2.0, and you had all of this documentation. It was like a, I think it was like 100 bucks or 150 or something. So we have the 500 manual. That's always good. It helps the resale value. The 590, we've got that. Hey, he didn't sell us a disk drive. What's going on? Um, Xbox 3D, good to have all of this stuff that, that really helps with value. We have another horrible cardboard thing with Amiga Basic, more Amiga Basic, and DOS Inside Out, Amiga DOS Inside Out. But my favorite part of box three is this. Look at this bag, this bag. Wow, must be 300 discs in here. Really, really cool. Um, you can sell 50 discs, just random discs, for like $50, $70. So this is worth a ton of money just right here. It's so funny, I forgot to show you the most important item out of box two, which is the A590 Amiga 500 hard drive. This is Commodore's solution, uh, hard drive solution for the 500. Um, it was generally considered overly expensive and not as fully featured as like the, the Great Valley products version, that kind of thing. There you can see 20, 20 megabytes. Wow. Um, but hey, I'll take it. Um, it's smaller than I thought. Like it matches the, 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 the grill in the back there. Um, but for some reason I thought it was, uh, bigger. The pictures make it look bigger. I thought it came up to the front, but I guess not. Also this metal flap I'd shown previously seems to be there for the purpose of this drive. I don't know, maybe someone put it in so the, the drive doesn't scratch the computer. I don't know. Okay, so I've been working on the computer, I opened it up, I took the shielding off, blew the dust off the board. The board looked really good. Um, cleaned the upper uh, casing with uh, toothbrush and alcohol, looks very nice now. And I opened up the A501 memory expansion unit. This has 512K kilobytes, not megabytes, and a clock calendar. So first you have to rip this guy off, which is a real pain. And then the battery, which is there, always corrodes. So you want to get rid of that because continued use of it will make it just leak and it can even get onto the board, which you don't want. So uh, yeah, just cleaned that off with uh, alcohol and a toothbrush and I'm going to put it back together. Should be in good shape. Okay, so I've assembled the system and this will be the first power on. Kind of awkward that you have to power on the hard drive and then the computer, but it is what it is. Ooh. It is very loud. The blank screen is what we want. We want to see that it's thinking about booting, and it is booting. Ooh, there we go. Workbench 2.0. Oh gosh, I might have to change this pointer. I might have to change that pointer before I sell this machine. So here's the Xbox 3D with Space Buds running. Uh, it's actually a pretty fun game. I was uh, I was impressed by it. I thought it would be kind of a gimmicky thing, but um, the Xbox are actually pretty cool. I don't think I'll be able to really show you the 3D effect here, but but it does it does give you a convincing uh, 3D environment and, and depth on the screen. So I have uh, assembled this kind of as I'm going to sell it as a complete package here. You know, you've got the original monitor, you've got the printer stand being used as a monitor stand, and there it is booting into the desktop. Uh, 1.5 meg of RAM, that is good. But yeah, we got the hard drive, we got the power supplies, we got the mouse, we got the uh, mouse pad, we ha even have a surge protector, we have a user guide, pile of random disks, which I definitely won't guarantee are working. Uh, all the power cables, uh, joystick, this one works. I swapped it out for the one that came with the lot because that one didn't seem to work. Got a cover, just all kinds of stuff here. A very comprehensive Amiga lot for the nostalgic person who just wants to get back into it. And one thing I've learned selling retro is that you want to sell a package because if you sell just the computer itself, they can look up what the computer goes for. They can say, hey, I'm sorry, these go for 250. I'm not gonna pay 400. But the thing is when you have a package, 
the value of the whole thing gets kind of fuzzy. You can't really compute it. No one has a package exactly like this. So instead of being logical and analytical about computing the value, it gets fuzzy and it gets emotional and the nostalgia kicks in and people think to themselves, ooh, I want this package because this is a unique package. There's nothing else like this package. And people will pay a lot more money for that kind of package. I'm probably going to list this for $14.99. And people would say it's crazy to get that much money, but it will happen. Another thing that's very important selling retro is to give a guarantee. Uh, the people who are getting back into their childhood computers, they are horrified that they're going to get the stuff and it's not going to work and they're not going to remember how to use it and all of that because they know their memory is a little bit deficient at this point. Uh, so if you guarantee it's working for 30 days, that gives them the confidence to say, yeah, I think I can, I think I can do that. So here's the perfect sound. I tested the disc to make sure the disc works. I didn't try the perfect sound itself. I might later. Uh, I listed that for $150. It'll go for $120 at some point. Uh, the Xbox 3D, uh, I tested. They are working. They have a manual and discs. Those work as well. These are kind of um, specialty items, I would say. I'm not including them in the package because these guys will go for a lot of money individually selling to people who are specifically looking for these items. The package includes stuff that anyone is going to want. You could say the hard drive is an extra, but really everyone wants a hard drive. There's no one who doesn't want a hard drive and can benefit from a hard drive. So I think that hard drive is the difference between this lot being worth $1,100 and $1,300, dollars $1,500. So here is everything laid out, ready for pictures for eBay. Um, yeah, it's so important to present it well. Show all of the elements, clean it up, get rid of all the gunk on it, uh, showcase everything that's included, and things can sell for three times what they, they would otherwise. You just want everything to be presentable and attractive. It's, it's pretty simple to double, triple your money just by representing things correctly. So after spending several hours cleaning obscene material from the computer, I finally listed it for $15.99 shipped. I wish I had the text of my listing, but it was a while ago and eBay deletes that stuff. But uh, needless to say, I described it thoroughly as fully working and complete and with no questions asked 30 day warranty. And it actually sold very quickly within a day or two. I asked $15.99 and uh, it sold for $12.74 with a best offer. And here I am shipping it out. Okay, and here we are at the end, the final analysis. Pretty easy, really. The system sold for $12.74. I also sold the Perfect Sound for $150, which was great. The system cost was $375. Then all associated fees and shipping were about $200. So $849 profit. That is pretty, pretty phenomenal. I, um, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with this. But best of all, I really only sold a selection of the whole lot, and I have all of this other stuff still, plus even other stuff not mentioned. Very conservatively, that's another $400, and the grand total profit for one single eBay listing worth of purchases is $1,249. It's just unbelievable. And believe me, while this may be better than average, it's not really all that uncommon either. Anyway, so that wraps it up. I hope you liked the first edition of Retro Resale. I'll be improving it and making changes, and we'll see how it goes. I'm making a video a week at this point. Some of them may be Retro Resale, and some may be other types of videos, but you can definitely count on me to publish a video every Wednesday from here on out. Thanks again for watching.